Good afternoon, Rajiv, and a very warm welcome to the Wellness Talk segment of our Wellness Week. Hi, everyone. We have with us Rajiv Nathani, who we all know is our Chief People Officer at Infogain. We have the privilege today to hear from him on the various aspects of his physical and mental fitness, as well as his thoughts on employee wellness, since we're embedding health and well-being at the heart of our employee focus, because our people, as you know, are our greatest asset. And we recognize that a healthy, happy, and a committed workforce is vital to our business success. So once again, thank you, Rajiv, for giving us this privilege to hear from you. I would thank you. Uh, thank you. I would uh, just get on to our Q and A, uh, and of course, all of us can't wait to hear from you. Thanks. So, Rajiv, thank to you. begin with, <laughs> uh, to begin with, you know. We'd like to know, everyone would want to know, what is your typical fitness routine this, these days? My fitness routine? Uh, it's, a, it's a morning ritual that helps me kick start my day uh, with a healthy dose of energy and positivity. Um, I wake up, I'm a you know early riser, so I wake up early. And the first constructive thing which I do is I head to my yoga studio where I attend sessions for yoga, asanas, and pranayam. It's a great way to limber up my body and calm my mind before I start my day. And right. typically on weekends, uh, I like to take things up a slight notch uh, uh, and either go for a run or hop on, to, hop on on my bicycle. Uh, given an opportunity, I enjoy giving my hand to sports and even hiking. Uh, these are typically icing to the cake. Uh, but even if I miss any of these activities during the week or, or over the weekend, I make sure that uh, to take a brisk uh, brisk walk to stay active and energized. Uh, for me, uh, fitness is not just a routine. It's a way of life. It's about investing in, in the body that supports me around the clock and staying healthy and active so I can live the life to the fullest. Uh, it's not just uh, about looking good, but about feeling good inside and out. So that's uh, my routine, um, uh, Sonia. Wow. I love what you said last. It's not just about looking good. It definitely is about feeling good inside out. Okay. Thanks, Rajiv. So another one, uh, was there a game changer for you that led you to being more dedicated towards your physical and mental health? And if if there was, what what was it? Uh, you know, it's uh, funny. Sometimes the biggest game changer in our lives is simply a shift in the perspective. And and it was similar to in my case. For me, that shift happened when I became more aware of myself, uh, not just as a physical being, uh, but as a spiritual one as well. Uh, I started to see that we are made up of four pillars of our well-being, body, mind, intellect, and spirit. Uh, and right. you know, taking care of each one of them is something which is non-negotiable. Uh, to me, our body, you know, our bodies are like vessels, right? That carry us through life, helping us experience the world through our senses and take and taking actions, right? Uh, yeah. So it only makes sense that we need to look after uh, look after them, uh, not just by eating right, but uh, keeping them fit and healthy. So this awareness of uh, four pillars of well-being has been transformative for me in numerous ways. It has helped me uh, to view fitness as an integral component of leading a complete and satisfying life, uh, rather than you know looking at it as a mundane uh, fitness activity, right. uh, so to say. Um, it has also motivated me to nurture my physical and mental well-being in a manner that is sustainable and pleasurable. Uh, not simply a means to an end. Uh, you know, if I actually reflect back, it's it's almost a decade since I started living by this belief, and I can honestly say that it it has transformed my life. I feel more alive, more energized, and more connected to myself and the world around me, for that matter. And if there is one message I could share with anyone looking to make a change in their life, it would be. Uh, take care of yourself, your body, your emotions, your intellect and spirit, you won't regret it. Great. I think that was a great message. At least for me, it was. Because <laughs> I really need that inspiration. 
this. So yeah, you know, uh, Rajiv, like we said, we'd also like to cover a little bit about employee wellness. So just wanted to understand from you, how does employee wellness relate to leadership? And in mm -hmm. relation to the same, what is the one advice that you would like to give our managers to ensure the well-being of their employees? See, I'm not a perfect or veteran to give advice, but uh, my personal belief is employee wellness and leadership are intricately linked and in fact you know i would uh, and you would agree and i would argue that a leader's most important role is to ensure the well-being of the team members right after Absolutely. all happy and healthy employees are more engaged they're more productive they're loyal and that definitely translates to better business results and a positive workplace environment right so my one piece of advice to managers uh, would be to prioritize employee wellness and make it a core part of their leadership philosophy. So this uh, means not right. just paying a lip service to the idea, but actively seeking out ways to support the team members, uh, their physical, mental, and emotional health. Uh, you know, some of the ways through which they could do it is whenever there are opportunities, like the ones which you have been organizing under Wellness Program Initiative these days, uh, encouraging people to participate in those, encouraging employees and the team members for regular breaks and time offs, uh, promoting uh, work-life balance, and also fostering a culture of open communication and support. I think at the same time, you know, other than these enablers, even leading by example and showing that you value sure. and prioritize your own well-being as well as that of your team would be the perfect uh, uh, piece of work. And ultimately, employee wellness is not just a nice-to-have perk. It's a critical component of a healthy and thriving workplace. And by making it a priority as a leader, uh, we can actually help our team members to be uh, to be the best selves, both at uh, work and beyond. You know, that's that's a uh, that's a message from me on this. Yeah, that's so true. I think leading by example really helps. I mean, every time I see you, <laughs> you know, <laughs> or a post made by you, uh, taking care of your health in different ways that you do, whether it's yoga or it's uh, you know cycling or anything else. It just kind of makes me feel that if somebody at somebody like you who's you know who has so much to do at work can remove the time to do that, then I think definitely I also can. So yeah, yeah and, and just, just don't <laughs> feel inspired. Take action. Yes. Make it work. <laughs> That's your best thing to do from a <laughs> physical well-being perspective. That's that's right. So Rajiv, another thing, um, I think that this is more uh, to do with, you know, your role and how it, it kind of uh, shapes uh, the rest of your day. So as a people leader, I'm sure you must be having a lot of uh, tough conversations that you come out from, and those definitely may have an impact on your emotional well-being. So how do you kind of cut yourself off from such a thing after your workday ends? So, you know, uh, dealing with tough conversations is an inevitable part of being a people leader, right? And it's true that they can sometimes have an impact on our emotional well-being. Uh, for me, when I look at it, practicing mindfulness, meditation, and developing emotional intelligence, uh, these things have really helped me in managing these situations better. So what I typically do is instead of uh, associating the issue with the person, I try to differentiate them in my mind this helps me to approach the situation more rationally and objectively and find a better way to deal with the issue. Practicing mindfulness has, has also helped me to be more resilient in the face of challenging situations and to accept things the way they are without becoming too emotionally reactive. Of course, uh, it's important to acknowledge that we are all human and can be impacted emotionally by these conversations. However, yes. by building our resilience, and developing the ability to approach situations in an objective and constructive way, we can learn to manage them better and become more effective people leaders. Right, great. I think that's uh, that's a that's a very relatable answer. So thank you. And uh, you know, last but a very important one, Rajiv. Um, you know, I think a lot of our employees would also relate to it. So as a parent and a working professional, how do you ensure to set set aside you know, some time to meet your wellness goals? So whether it is being a parent or a working professional, it's both uh, the same thing. You need to balance everything. So as I said, for me, physical fitness is a way of life. And hence, I don't see them to be goals, 
you know, I don't really look at them, oh, I need to aspire to do this or that. It's more about way of life. Uh, as I said, it's a morning routine, going for yoga asanas. Uh, that's part of my life. Uh, weekend, I try to be outdoor. Uh, I look at the wellness goals from a physical, mental, emotional well-being perspective. So it's all driven based on intention and discipline. You know, that's how I look at it from. If you have the intention to go for it, you will go for it. If you practice discipline, you will make it work, right? It's like that uh, saying, I'll wake up at 5 a.m. in the morning every day, go for a walk. You have the intention. But yeah, you are not waking up at five, so discipline is lacking. So it, the both need to work together to make it happen. You know, that's a, a short response to your question, Sonia. Sure. Thank you, Rajiv. Thank you so much. Uh, I think this Thank was you. a great uh, talk. More than that, it was very inspi inspiring. And I'm hoping it's going to inspire, you know, a lot of us uh, who actually get to uh, hear this and uh, kind of start aligning with our uh, fitness and wellness goals. Uh, considering both physical and mental health because you know like we all know that although physical has always been important but in in the current uh, day and age i think mental health is also equally important and and an area of focus so thank you raji thank you sorry for having me here it was great uh, talking to you and all the uh, you know nice questions which you asked uh, uh, those are very reflective also for me personally thank you thanks thank you raji yeah, bye bye bye